Hello, good evening, and welcome to another episode of All Influencer Wrestling. I am your clout missioner, Captain Tyrion Gaidal. And making their way down, they've been on a tear this season. It's the dastardly Doo making their way down to the ring. These two making a statement out here tonight in this qualifier match for the double clout tournament. Bob and Hank, the dastardly duo, impressing everyone with some incredible performances this season. Can they continue this through, or will they fall short at the wall of meat? That is the randomly thrown together tag team of Big Magic Reynolds and Brock. The winner of this match will advance to the semi-finals of the tournament to take on Tiny Hattomancers, who put away Artificial Intelligence last week to advance. And their opponents, first from parts unknown, weighing in at 444 pounds, Brock the Gardner! Reminding everyone that Brock does still hold that drama bomb briefcase. We saw how well that can be put into use by Presery, who dropped her own bomb recently, claiming the Sold Clout Championship from Glix, our previous dominant holder. Presery now atop the mountain. And staring down her soon to be challenger. And here is Brock's partner for this tournament. Will it be on? Will it go further than that if they do well? Remains to be seen. Will the theme of the night be Do Woo or will it be Choo Choo? The train has left the station. The lab is open and the goblins are loose. Kicking things off with this match, we'll be wrapping out tonight later on with the other qualifier match for the night as Tiff and our current Soul Clout champion, Averick, team up to take on, take on the team of Abel Theron, our former Soul Clout champion, and Renace Crimson, who have met each other across the ring many a time, and we'll find out how well those two can coexist later on tonight. We also have a thrilling four-way contest to determine the number one contender for Aria Night Valley's Shillian Dollar Championship. Aria has seen off every competitor thus far. We're going to determine tonight who her next challenger is going to be. We still do have showcase matches lined up for some of our debuting Clout Chasers who we saw at Overboard a few weeks back and have yet to be given their chance to shine one-on-one, -on -one, we'll be seeing them in action later on tonight. And it's Brock and Bob kicking things off and kicking is the way we kick out here. Good move by Bob. Immediately knocks Brock down and tag to Hank. Knock the giant down. And this is amazing teamwork out the gate by the dastardly duo trying to keep Brock stunned, keep him off his feet. And that is the problem with this, though. He's just that damn big. 
Hank in a dangerous position now, tacked in this team's corner, and there's the tag. It's Big Magic Reynolds into the ring. Thinks about charging over there to try and knock Bob off the apron, and both try to dive. Spear by Reynolds, drop kick by Hank, both missed. Reynolds the one to recover first, and that sends Hank crashing over the outside. We have Big Magic and the Big Badger teaming up to try to take down the Doo We haven't seen much out of Brock lately. He has been lurking back in the shadows with that drama bomb briefcase ready. But back into performance here tonight. And Reynolds getting back in there to break the ref's count turns his attention over to Bob. Heads his takedown by... Hank tries to get that crowd hyped up onto the side of the dastardly Doo Elbow right to the temple of Big Magic Reynolds, and there's the tag. We have beautiful Bob Legal and Block the kick attempt there by Reynolds and bounces the head of Bob right off of that knee. Bob in a dangerous position now in that corner, and there's the tag. Double team by this mountain of meat. This is not a great situation, and over he goes. Planted smack in the middle of the ring. Wrenching now, slowing it down. We've seen this from Bob, uh, from uh, Brock, excuse me, many a time. Slowing the pace down. Wrenching the neck of a beautiful Bob. Kip up, tried to knock Brock off of balance, didn't work. Again, just simply overpowered. Goes for the tag to Big Magic Reynolds, and there is that hot tag to Handsome Hank. Blocks the flying elbow attempt by Big Magic. And back elbow from Hank. Reynolds struggles back to his feet. Catches and boom, down, plants, goes Reynolds, but right back up to his feet. It's going to take a lot more than that to keep the Artificer down. DDT, smack into the mat, right onto the head, but spins right back up. Oh, Bob, I don't think realized he thought he had a little more time than that. And then, oh, good counter, though, by Hank. And again, down goes Reynolds. Yelling at the big man to get up. And down goes the knees. And kick right to the temple. I think that is Reynolds busted open. There has been an accident in the lab. And... Bob tying up Reynolds and wrenching him back there and planting that busted open head right into the mat. And kick out at two. Reynolds not attempting to go for the rope break, it seems surprisingly. And Hank just vaulting over the prone form of Reynolds who really needs to get that tag over to Bob. Or to, uh, to Brock, excuse me. I am terrible with... Uh, with names tonight, blame it on the rum. Reynolds fighting back into it, hoists Hank up onto the shoulder, and down he goes. Payback by Big Magic, but not a kick out, barely even a one count. Hank fights his way back into this. Horns up, says Big Magic, though. Playing to the camera like the consummate professional he is. Strike right into the head of Hank. And choke slam down, sprawled out. Reynolds has something in mind. This is a bad situation. For Handsome Hank, up we goes. And chew, chew. The train has left the station. Brock, though, too slow to get in. Bob able to break up that pinfall attempt. Reynolds not happy about that. Had the match won, Brock did not make it in in time to fend off 
beautiful Bob who saved that match for the Dastardly Doom one. Keeping isolated and playing to the crowd again. Horns up, mugging to the camera, blocking Hank from getting over to his corner. Almost taunting the dastardly Doo member and lighting him up with those punches. Elbow back into the corner. Hank tries to counter, takes those elbow strikes for his trouble. Ducks under that blow from Reynolds. Trying to get him back over to his corner. Reynolds simply too strong. Over into the team corner and... Thought we were going to go for the tag there, but no. Hank able to fight out. And over and plants Reynolds. Much needed tag now made as beautiful Bob. There's the tag. Do we have switched out? Bob now the legal man. Reynolds rolled to the outside to get a little bit of a breather. Ducks under almost laid out the wrap there with that one. And sends Reynolds flying. Reynolds crawling over, takes a kick to the ribs for the trouble. And it's Hank now back in looking to get a measure of payback after that beating that was thrown down onto him by Reynolds earlier in the match. Thought about going for Brock there to knock him off. Thought better of it. And down into the mat goes Reynolds. Goes for the pinfall. Can Brock make it in time? Doesn't need to. Reynolds dug down plenty of energy left in Big Magic. And there's the tag. Brock now legal once again. And just hoists. Hank around, bounces his spine off the corner, goes for the pinfall. But again, it's beautiful Bob right there to make the save. And look at the airtime that handsome Hank just got. Taking a moment to hype up, but look behind you, Bob, and didn't pay enough attention. I think maybe almost trying to lull Bob there. And look at that, just disregarding Bob entirely. Shades of Samoa Joe there by Brock, just completely walking away from Bob. Reynolds now once again the legal man. That knee looks potentially injured. And over we go, and down goes Reynolds again. Turn, uh, Hank turning his attention, or sorry, Bob, excuse me, turning his attention to Brock. He's got the big man through the ropes. There goes the Badger's neck off that mid rope. He's gone up to the top rope. What does Bob have in mind here? Flying elbow right to the back shoulders of Big Magic Reynolds. Hyping up as Reynolds goes back to his feet. Over we go, and a counter by Reynolds. Brock laid out on the outside. Bob almost had that match won, but Reynolds turns things around last minute, and up we go again. And Bob able to fight his way through, going into that already bleeding head of Big Magic. And there's Bob with the save. Pulled Reynolds into a good position there over to his corner, but this time Brock on the ball, moving with an unnatural speed to keep that pinfall from going through and keeps the match alive for this meat mountain of a team. Is this going to do it? Very slow count there by the ref. What? What was that about? Clearly a fan of the Duwu. That, that we are going to have words about later on. And back to the choke slam. Down goes beautiful Bob. Reynolds waiting. And here we go back again. He's not finding out this time. Choo, choo. The train has left the station. But Bob, as I brought again, too slow. The ref, though, in the way of Brock. 
Shoulder barge knocks Hank off. Reynolds has had enough. It's Brock's turn, I think. The, the ref there got in the way of Brock, preventing him from stopping Handsome Hank from breaking up that pinfall. Hank now laid out on the outside. And another quick tag. It's Reynolds now legal once again. And goes for a big boot, but blocked by Bob. And we're back up again and plants Reynolds. And Brock just barely made the save. The ref again standing between Brock and Reynolds. He was able to shift his momentum around. There is something, something going on with this. Somebody has either paid this ref off. Whether they have it out for Brock, Reynolds or both, I'm unsure, but we have to really investigate this. Tag once again, and Brock now legal man. Beautiful Bob safely in his corner, but Brock not caring at all about that. Rolls out the way, though. Good counter by Bob. Up onto the shoulders, though. And there's Brock with that repositioning, smacking right back into his team's corner and bounces the head of Bob right off that turnbuckle. What does a Brock have in mind now? Another quick tag trying to keep each other fresh. This team's starting to learn to work together a little better now. Try to take out the arm of beautiful Bob, who desperately needs that tag to Hank. Just waiting there, watching his partner get absolutely picked apart by these two. Rolls to the outside, there's the tag again. Tag synergy seemingly formed between this meat mountain of a team. There's that shoulder barge again. Hank on the outside. Oh god, we've seen Brock going up top. That is a huge splash from the top. The ribs of Hank must surely be dust after that. Brock now in a full swing. Counter the desperate last minute attempt by beautiful ball that he's got the big man down Hank back to his feet beautiful ball but putting a shift in for the dust of the duo right now really carrying this match Hank barely been able to get a lick in and sends Brock not into the ring oh that the knee of Brock Potentially taken out by Bob, but excellent look at that ring awareness there by the shape-shifting Badger. Blocked, blocked Bob from going to make that tag to Hank. So instead, continuing to work over those damaged lower limbs of Brock. Only a one count, though. Still plenty of fight left in this barbarian ddt by bob sends brock down boots to the face up we go and again plants brock excellent ring positioning reynolds though fired up not taking any of the ref's disrespect right there to save the match and again, DDT by Bob. Damn near climbing Brock to get up on that one. But can't get to Hank for, th for the pin. And oh, look at that again. Brock dodging out of the way. Hank, uh, Bob over the top rope. Nothing but wood on the outside. Down goes Hank and Brock slowly making his way to Reynolds, realized Bob was back in behind him. Took a nasty fall off that as Bob is hyping up to the crowd, but there's that tag. Reynolds is back. Reynolds is angry. Reynolds is shoulder checking. Beautiful Bob. Hank's on the outside, nowhere to be seen. Is that going to do it? 
2.999, but the Dastardly Duwu are still in the match. This is just how bad both of these teams want that. Roll, uh, roll up, roll up, Bot, Bot's got the roll up, and almost put Reynolds away, but somehow able to pull through. Oh, and elbow, and another one. Are we finally going to see the tag made? And yet, finally, finally, Bob able to tag out. And there's another counter by Reynolds. We've seen this time and time again. The Duwu trying to go high up onto the shoulders to land finishers. Reynolds simply too strong. He's got those moves scouted and down. Bad ring positioning, though. And look at that. Pushed. Bob pushed Hank into the ropes right there to get that rope break. Reynolds hauling Hank over to the other corner now. And tag made. I think Hank is about to go flying. What? Nope. Punch right to the ribs. Those big meaty fists of prop. And down goes Hank. Repositioning in the ring now. What does Brock have in mind? Boot to the spine. Pulls Hank back up to his feet and counter. Knocks Brock's jaw in and there's that nasty kick again. Brock needing to haul himself up with the ropes. And I think Brock's busted open as well now. Both members of the team. We've got some bloodied meat in the ring right now. And... That's Brock in trouble. He's in their corner and Reynolds barges past the ref right again in the way, but Reynolds again able to save the match. Beautiful Bob. It's haunting Brock. Not the best of ideas there. And again, slam down, but there's Reynolds. Boot to the ribs. Bob had enough of that, sends Reynolds into the turnbuckle. And trying to land Reynolds on top of Brock there almost. But that, that may have given, it's taken out the possibility of Reynolds breaking up a pinfall, but did that give Brock some time to recover? Brock in trouble, trapped, isolated in the Doomwoo's corner. And have you ever seen a badger fly? Up he goes and crashing down. And slowly rolls out of the ring, but that has given Hank time to get up to the top. But sees Reynolds eyeing him there and have thought better of that. Bob sends Brock into the ring, ring whilst Hank is trying to eliminate the Reynolds factor and looks like he's done so, but Brock had that moment to recover and that might be too much. Shattering the kneecaps there of, of Hank and there's once again Bob with the save. Frustration starting to build in Brock. He's just choking out Hank at this point. Is that going to do it? Ribs crushed again with the save is beautiful, Bob. Hook suplex over. He goes. Hank in trouble. Able to kip up, though. Can he fight his way out of this dangerous predicament? Backs himself back into the corner. Tried to get some momentum going, but bad move. Miscalculation there by Hank may well have cost the Duru significantly. And there we have once again the choke slam. Down goes 
Hank, and I think we're going to see the tuple out of the station once again. And the high train bomb, though, right into the corner with... Uh, that was the blood head up in Reynolds. He threw Handsome Hank into his own team's corner. Terrible miscalculation there by Big Magic. And back over the tag made Brock now once again legal the prone form of handsome Hank springs up with a kip up and manages to block that attack there by Brock who is now bounced into his own corner as well and there's the tag it's beautiful Bob once again and we're going to see a badger fly for a second time up oh, nope shoulder checks down goes the barbarian and again Pulling out that slam, but kick to the ribs. Reynolds saved the match. Both of these teams have the, the enthusiasm up, the excitement up, but the blood is running so hot, they're not thinking strategy. They're not taking out the opponent's teammate to prevent that blocking of a pinball attempt. And there goes Brock. Is this going to finally do it? Reynolds on the outside. Bob thinking he needs assistance. It's Hank now legal once again. But that gave Brock time to run to his feet. Does Hank have something in mind? He does, and this time again. And Brock still kicks out the rage really building. He hauls himself back up on the ropes. Reynolds finally back in action, though. The team is back together. And I thought there we had Bob going to take out Reynolds. Sling Blade by Bob takes down Brock further, going for the pinfall. I don't know that that's going to be enough. Maybe it is. Reynolds barely in time. I think that was going to keep Brock down. It didn't seem like he was capable of kicking out of that. But again, Reynolds makes the save. This is the, pro the puzzle the Duru need to solve. They have to keep the opponent's team both down long enough to prevent those saves. But when you have two men as large, as resilient, as determined as Big Magic Reynolds and Brock, how do you keep them down for that long? Hook suplex again, release, over goes. Beautiful Bob, and there's the tag once again. Reynolds has had time to recover. And it catches knees for his trouble. DDT, that already busted open forehead of Reynolds, taking yet further damage. Look at that, the crimson mask rolling through. Scissor spin. And he's up to the top again. It's beautiful Bob going to the top. And a big, beautiful crossbody splash from the top rope. Is that finally going to keep Reynolds down? Tagging in Hank. And standing at Moonsault there by Hank. Ref getting into position, but once again, didn't take out the big man. Brock saves the match. Frustration, I think, starting to build on the part of, uh, the part of Handsome Hank there. This is an incredibly hard-fought match. Wrenches over the leg of Reynolds. A terrible ring positioning. Where, where did Brock go? Tried to, obviously, try to get around to come in from the other side. Made it just barely in time. Trying to get around the ref, perhaps, again. Locks up. Reynolds sends Bob flying over that top rope. And there was the instruction to, Bob, to, to Brock there, I think, maybe go for him. But Brock keeping an eye on things as Reynolds starts to take out Hank on the outside. Blocks the big clothesline.
What does Bob have in mind? A running elbow. Reynolds slumped down and ducks out of the way. Hank there looks like he's dazed on his feet. I don't think Handsome Hank knows where he is right now. And down to the lab with that choke slam again goes beautiful Bob. Hank still knocked on his feet. You can damn near see the birds flying around his head and that did it. A hell of a hard war. war between those two teams, but they have done it. The dastardly Doo-Woo's streak has come to an end at the hands of Big Magic Reynolds and Brock. Meaning, what a challenge now awaits the Tiny Hattomancers. Next week, the semi-final has been set. Stephen Joyce and DC Lasserre will take on Big Magic and Brock. That is going to be a hell of a fight. This also potentially sets the stage for a massively hard-hitting final. This new team would potentially wind up in that final against RBFS. Now that is a contest of big meaty men and minotaurs slapping meat. We're going to take a breather and clean both of these guys' blood out of the ring. We'll be right back with more. For the sake of our competitors, hopefully slightly less hard-hitting cloud chasing action right after this. Hi. I'm Captain Turiant Gaidel, most definitely handsome pirate in all of Lumsalaminsa, and the Clout Mishnah of all influencer wrestling. As a swashbuckling pirate, I know a thing or two about hats. And sometimes, even I feel the hats I own are just too big. So when I feel the need for minuscule millinery, there's only one place that comes to mind. TinyHatLabs.com Tiny Hat Labs have always sought to push the boundaries of what's possible in client engagement millinery feedback solutions. Their guiding question remains the same today as it was when they were founded. What if small hat, but tiny? Operating at the nexus of science, engineering, artificial intelligence, art, fashion and design, Tiny Hat Labs seeks to pave the way to a paradigm shift in headpiece technology. While others ask how much, TinyHatLabs.com asks how little. I'm Captain Tyrion Guidel, and TinyHatLabs.com is my favourite place for hats on the internet. And welcome back to a showcase match. Two new clap chasers. You saw them at Overboard, and they're now out to prove their place on the roster. We saw her come into the match at Overboard. Did not have the result that she was looking for there. The relentless Olivia Mason making her way down to the ring. We have yet to really see what Mason can do. And after that opener of a match, the bar has definitely been set. But now we have somebody, her competitor, looking to continue the success of the lab. Big Magic Reynolds unleashed the chew on the dastardly Doo-Woo. And here is the Seraphim of the Chew. An enigmatic figure Guidance of the Train. Heavily involved with the Lab Goblins, the Seraphim. Who we also saw making her way down in the Overboard match. Again, similar to Mason, didn't have the showing that she wanted. 
both of these two out to prove their place here tonight. Can the Chu be guided to victory twice in a row? Locking up and tried to tangle there, but Olivia got the better of that and not a good move to get into a strength contest with Olivia Mason. Just look at those shoulders. Olivia Mason, damn here, hit as if to say, I am here to chase this cloud. I'm here to carry this entire company on my shoulders. You can clearly tell that I've got the musculature for it. Not going well for the Seraphim right now. Mason completely picking up Art, the conductor of the Jew. Bounces off the ropes and a running shin strike. Rolling Seraphim across. Back elbow. And again. Not releasing a triple back elbow with the grasp on the wrist there. And Mason clearly saying, look how hard hitting that last match was. We're going to continue it through. Trying to break open the face of the Seraphim, who was able to kick out before that three count. I don't know how well she's going to appreciate that as Mason is up on the top and ducks out of the way. Out of the way, Mason crashing down under her own power and the Seraphim trying to take full advantage of that, wrenching the legs, tying up Mason. And there's a big boot for her trouble. We're seeing a match of technical expertise versus sheer power right now and power is winning by a mile. Knee strikes right into the thighs. Ducks under and a, cro a series of punches there now. Seraphim firing up. Somebody loaded some coal into the chew and found that fire within, but Mason able to counter. A brief flurry of offense did not last as long as she needed it to. Trying to fight her way out of that shoulder check and she's able to do it and keeps Mason down. Got to keep her low, got to keep her on that mat. Big chop and strike, strike, roundhouse kick. Mason's on the ropes. Ducks under. And what does it add? Big, big lariat there to Mason. A significant shift in the momentum of the match. Ties up the legs. Really trying to wrench that in. She's got that hold locked in deep. Mason in the middle of the ring, but able to power out through. Finally finding her footing. But rolls through, and look at that. Cutter, stunner, out of nowhere by Mason. Seraphim able to fight through. Wrenches the arm though. She's got that arm of Mason tied up in the ropes. Big chop to the chest. And there's a counter elbow though. Mason fighting her way back out. Clothesline sends the Seraphim down. Rolls to the outside to catch a breather. But Mason over the top rope. Sends both competitors crashing down, did just as much damage to herself as she did to Seraphim there. Both of them taken out on the outside. 
and both back to their feet at the same moment. Mason got the better of the exchange, sends the Seraphim back in. And tried for the flying elbow, countered by Mason, and then up onto the shoulders again. And down goes Seraphim. Rolls through though, counters, and firing up herself, tries to pummel the face of Mason. Is that going to be enough? Tried to knock over six, Mason still had enough wherewithal to kick out. And got the armbar locked in, but limbs of Mason long enough, able to get that rope break. Didn't quite have the ring positioning there. Still, though, trying to soften up the arm further, potentially to go for that again later on, really working at that left arm of Olivia Mason. And there, a counter with the good arm, and we're right back up onto those shoulders again. And Pilar, that has to be it. Landed down there on her neck. No, nope. picks through, kicks through. Two and a half, 2.9. But the Seraphim continues the roll through and again up onto the shoulders, going for a ride. Right back to the well again. Didn't work the first time. Is it going to work the second? And that's done it. Olivia Mason puts away the Seraphim to score her first victory in her first solo match in All Influencer Wrestling. Looking to push out of the shadow of the Mason clan and forge her own way, Olivia is off to a dominant start at that here at her new tenure in AI Dub. Here is your winner, the relentless Olivia Mason. Proving why that moniker of the relentless is well earned. Keep a close eye on Olivia as she continues to state her claim. We will be right back with yet more clout chasing action. We have further to get through that number one contenders match I mentioned earlier still to come later on tonight. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. The next match is after these short messages. Luz tried everything to open the door, but it wouldn't budge. Hammers, axes, magic, saws, more magic, fire, even more magic, and magic explosions. Still, the door refused her. Why? After all this time and effort, why wouldn't the damn thing open? Sure, it was an enchanted door that would open the path to a potentially catastrophic amount of magic pouring back into the universe, causing endless natural disasters that would drown or bury most cities from existence. But there was an equally high chance that wouldn't happen, and that the magic had been sealed away by ignorant fools for nothing. She had to believe there was a reason why she could tap into a sliver of the magic locked behind the door. That this was it, her singular life purpose. Open the door. Restore its magic back to everyone like it used to be in the stories, where anyone could use magic, for good or bad. That had to be it, right? That had to be why she was standing here, in the door's pocket dimension, on a small plot of earth, large enough for only one person to stand in front of it, swearing at this void black door with iridescent veins flowing along its surface like water, living, taunting her to just open it already. So why was it so hard to swing the damn thing wide? Somehow, she had shoved the door apart just a crack ages ago. A thin, wispy line of light seeped out of a seam down the center. Whenever she used teleportation magic, as she had decided to call it since she didn't know the correct term and hadn't seen others use it before, probably because it was dangerous and required sliding through space and time, but who was counting? 
she tapped into a sliver of warmth and power to travel wherever she wished. She'd managed that slight opening unthinking as a child, then never again. What was she doing wrong now? Worse, what if she wasn't doing anything wrong? What if this door wasn't meant to open for her after all? What else could there be for her but this? After everything, after all that searching, what else could there be? This has been an extract from The Void Door by V. M. Ayala. To read the full story, please visit beneath-ceaseless-skies.com and search for issue 378. And thank you for watching Masterpiece Theatre. We are back, opening up in the ring. Saria Violet taking on Mac. We had to cut things down because of that. Wait. Banshee. Banshee perhaps out here to say that things are not as done with Saria as we thought. Takes Banshee's. Banshee has taken Saria's corner. Mind games, perhaps? Or an offer of. An alliance by Banshee towards Saria here. Mac plants Saria down. Knocked off her game, I think, is Violet, but Banshee taking up position in in Saria Violet's corner. These two have had a hard hitting rivalry over the last several months, put to an end, it seemed, to overboard when Saria defeated. Banshee in their Hell in a Cell match. Is this Banshee extending the glove of friendship to Saria? Or has that thrown Saria off enough to where the flailing attempts at Mac at some form of offense are actually proving effective? And backstabber by Michaela Lane, unsurprising. Trying to take out those dangerous striking limbs of Saria Violet. And biting the hand. That's the that's the strategy from the from the Mac I know. She will take any advantage she has to win. She doesn't so much wrestle as scrap. Boot to the spine. And shoulder check by Violet, though, trying to shift the momentum of the mat match around. And a big kick. And look at that on the outside. Banshee, indeed, cheering on Saria Violet. Spin kick to the temple of Michaela Lane. Elbow strike sends Mac down. Is that going to be enough to take her out? Nope, just a one count. She may be utterly obnoxious, but she's scrappy and she's got fight in her, does Mac. Saria sends her into the turnbuckle, and there's that sharp back elbow. Counters, but boots to the gut. Blocks those attempt at elbow strikes. Saria hauls Lane back to her feet, and there's that devastating kick we have seen end many a match. Violet going up to the top, Mac in trouble right now, and big crossbody off the top rope, smack in the middle of the ring. Didn't go for the pins, tried to soften Mac up a little more, and she got a boot of her own, rolled out of the way of that elbow drop attempt. And quick counter though by Violet. Those dangerous snap kicks. Going back up to the top again, maybe? No, it sees Mac trying to roll to the outside and puts a stop to that. Pulls her back up and there again, spin kick as Banshee celebrates on the outside. Bouncing Mac's head off the canvas, rolls her over. Mac rolls through to the outside.
striking a pose, Saria Violet. Mac rolls over, rolls through, having a ribs absolutely decimated right now. Manages a snap kick of her own, though, to counter. Didn't last long. Saria able to roll through out of that attempt. And Mac getting back in control, but the refs count. Mac able to get in there before the refs count hits 10. Shocking quite literally everybody backstage as we realize that Michaela Lane can in fact count to 10. Spin kick to the ribs by Violet though sends her back down. And that has it down. Mac is out. Banshee celebrating a very interesting turn of events there. We saw that kick to the back of the head knocked her off. And there was the follow through, kick after kick after kick. The rivalry between Banshee and Saria pushing them both to new heights. And there we still see Banshee celebrating on the outside. What does this mean? Do we have a new combination potentially targeting those double clout titles held by Candied Ginger. We'll be seeing how this change of events holds out over the coming weeks, I am certain. Well, with the distraction there by Banshee knocking Mac off her game, quick match there, so we're going to roll right on through, take another quick short break. We'll be back in just a moment for our next bout. Don't go anywhere. Up next is that number one contenders match for competitor elimination match. We'll be right back after this quick message. Hi, I'm Captain Turiant Gaidel, most definitely handsome pirate in all of Lumsa Laminsa and the clout missioner of all influencer wrestling. As a swashbuckling pirate, I know a thing or two about hats. And sometimes even I feel the hats I own are just too big. So when I feel the need for minuscule millinery, there's only one place that comes to mind. TinyHatLabs.com Tiny Hat Labs have always sought to push the boundaries of what's possible in client engagement millinery feedback solutions. Their guiding question remains the same today as it was when they were founded. What if small hat, but tiny? Operating at the nexus of science, engineering, artificial intelligence, art, fashion and design, Tiny Hat Labs seeks to pave the way to a paradigm shift in headpiece technology. While others ask how much, TinyHatLabs.com asks how little. I'm Captain Tyrion Guidel, and TinyHatLabs.com is my favourite place for hats on the internet. Welcome back to Four Way Action. We have assessed the previous records. And we have four competitors determined. From the Bronx, New York, the professional Chen Harper. Chen Harper saying that purple shillion dollar belt would look real good around her waist. This match structured elimination style rules. Weaponry legal, no disqualification. As each competitor is pinned or submitted, they will leave the match until only one remains. The winner of this match gets a title shot next week against Arya Night Valley for that Shillian Dollar Championship. Aria sure to be watching on backstage to see how these competitors hold up. And this one has to be a favorite. From parts unknown, Jen. Jenneth Astorio seeking once again to make her way back to that Shillian Dollar Championship. Jenneth, remember, was the first ever holder of that title. It has been in Arya's hands ever since, and Jenneth wants it back. Mm -hmm. 
Will Astorio's powerful presence see her through to victory? An elimination match potentially very well suited for Jeneth's skill set. Usually her failure in multi-man matches has resulted because of the other competitors isolating her and knowing she needs to be taken out. Will that repeat here or will she power her way through? But here's a competitor who knows how to take advantage of any opportunity as it presents itself, Valoran Amastasia. Valoran wants that Shillian Dollar title as well. Her former partner, Presri D, now the holder of Soul to Clout, Valoran looking to say that she may remain in the shadows, but you should not forget about her. looking perhaps to prove that Pressery cutting her loose was a mistake. Valoran out for clout all of her own. And here comes the fourth competitor in this matchup tonight. We have seen Lucette Forrester be the spoiler to Jeneth Astorio time and time again. Astorio has finally figured out the puzzle of the Mother of Pain. Can she see her way past Lucette Forrester? Or will this opportunistic fighter pilot take the victory and get another shot at that Shillian Dollar title? One of these four competitors will be challenging Aria next week. Lady Night Valley, perhaps the most vulnerable she has ever been, knowing that it was her who got pinned by Presri to cost Glix her Soul Cloud Championship. How will that play into the mindset of Aria having to defend her own title? Again, a four-way match, no disqualifications, weapons, legal, pinfall, or submission. As each competitor gets knocked out, the field will thin until only one remains. And Lucette, her erstwhile rival, Jeneth, down in the corner. Lucette knows who the biggest danger in this match is as far as she's concerned and looks to try and take Jeneth out early. Meanwhile, Harper and Valoran locking up. Look at that, the fight in Lucette. And Spear, though, by Valoran taking her down. Sneak attack, we've seen those work very well by before. And look at the power of Chen Harper. Gods, to bounce Jennifer off like that, that takes some doing. And there, once again, that attack from behind. Jeneth is not messing around though, she's going right for those weaponry and Jeneth has pulled out the sledgehammer. We have seen Astorio do a mass amount of damage with that weapon in particular before. And Lucette Forrester knows it, keen to get that out of the hands of Astorio. Forrester sends Harper bouncing off the announce table. Takes a moment to recover. Good strategy by the veteran Chen Harper. And manages to lock up, sends. And she's still got that lock in on Astorio. Whilst it's weapon really eagle and no DQ, all uh, uh, pinfalls or submissions, excuse me, do have to happen inside the ring. And Astorio looks to take out Forrester. Brutalized her with that sledgehammer, but Forrester able to kick out. She's not willing to go down. Knee strike, though, isolated in the ring as Harper is picking apart Valorin on the outside. Astorio trying to humiliate Forrester. And back to the sledgehammer. 
crack into the knee. Mm -hmm. And look at that brutalizing Lucette. Valorant comes in to try to pick up the pieces. Jennifer says, no, this one's mine. But there's Valorant to try to capitalize. This is what this is what Anastasia does. Is it sneaks in when you least expect it and takes great opportunity, but I don't know that Astorio was the best person to do that against. Delayed vertical suplex, down it goes Valorin. Harper though, veteran instincts right there to capitalize. As everyone now back into the ring. Anastasia, I think, saved the match for Forrester there, and now she's the one with that sledgehammer, picking up where Astorio left off. I've never seen anyone give a sneak attack with a sledgehammer before, but Valorin just did it. Lucette, though, still able to power through, kicks out, right back to that hammer, rolls out the way. Forrester bouncing off the middle rope, head scissors, down goes Anastasia, and she's finally got her hands on the sledgehammer herself. Meanwhile, on the outside of the ring, Astorio and Harper locking up. Sends Astorio into those nasty steel ring steps, and that's Anastasia down. Kick out, though, at just a one. Lucette has that sledgehammer once again. She knows full well how that feels and is looking to inflict it on Valorant. One strike, no too far. Knee strike drops down. Is that going to take it out? Has that done it? Barely. Two, I thought that hit the three count, but no. Lucette kicked out a split second before the ref's hand hit the mat. Meanwhile, Astorio has Harper up for another one of those trademark delayed vertical suplexes and that's going to go down right onto that wood wooden ringside. Showing off her raw power is Jennifer Storio disrespecting Chen Harper on the outside. What does Amastasia have in mind? A rolls through trying to choke, look at that, choking out Forrester using the ring rope as an assist. Takes a clubbing blow to the back from Astorio. Harper recovered on the outside and she's back in now. All four competitors back in. Astorio trying to submit Anastasia. Valoran able to strike a way out. Rolls through and Harper there to capitalize. Jenneth rolls to the outside to take a bit of a breather. Lucette back on her feet on the outside as well. It's Anastasia and Harper, the two illegal in the ring. I think lured in again by that interesting formation of a seeming alliance between Banshee and Saria Violet. We heard the noise there, that familiar sound of the bike of Candy Holiday arriving at the arena. Not in action, but keeping an eye on things. And Anastasia tied up by Chen Harper, smack in the middle of the ring. Can she power through? Is she going to tap? Able to roll out though, she does get through. She is able to survive yet further as Forrester tries to bounce a uh, bounce Astorio off the ringside and now oh, that crunch was the ribs of, Sh of Chen Harper. Chen capitalizes, locks that. The sledgehammer is gone and rolls through. There's that sneak attack I'm talking about. Almost had it down, but Chen Harper able to power out, but excellent counter there. And rolling through, look at the way the spine of Valorant is contorting right now. And there's the tap, she has to break it out. Valorant Anastasia, the first to go. Chen, Jenneth, Lucette. Three remain, one will meet Aria Night Valley next week. And Harper just watching as Astorio picks apart Forrester in the corner there. And a rare misstep by the veteran. 
She rolled Astorio into the ring where that sledgehammer was waiting. Well, so able to get the, the sledgehammer back out of the grasp of Astorio, but that was a nasty blow. And big drop kick by Astorio Lucette. Lights her up with those swift kicks and warning kick. Down goes Astorio on the outside, but not going to help Forrester to have that out there. You have to get her back into the ring to round up this match. Cannot claim a pinfall or submission on the outside. And Chen Harper sensibly letting these two go at it on the outside. She is just waiting. Waiting for her opportunity. And there it goes and dives through the ropes. Takes out Forrester from the outside as, Luce, as Astorio is stunned. But recovers quicker, I think, than Chen thought she was going to. Jennifer Astorio fired up. Furious, yelling at the prone Lucette Forrester, who heard Harper coming from behind, didn't rotate in time. It took that clothesline and counter, though, Harper and Astorio going at it. There's Forrester once again, takes out the leg of Jennifer. Not looking good for Lucette. Harper over and manages to release Astoria right into that wooden ship siding. Gotta get this back into the ring. They have to get this back in. The problem with this situation will be no matter how much damage you do to your opponent, you're going to have to haul them up. You're going to have to get them back into that ring and that's going to give them time to catch their breath. That is going to give them time to recover. Harper, swift flurry of offense, takes Astorio down. Gets knocked down for her own troubles by Forrester. And now all three back up. Um, Lucette Forrester rolled through from Chen, but the charging blow from Astorio was waiting right there ready for her. And there we go, softened her up, back into the ring goes Forrester. And there's those instincts of Chen. She takes down Astorio on the outside. But DDT by Forrester rolls through. And Astorio waits. There's no point saving her opponent. Just waiting to pick up the pieces. You will not see the alliances form in this match. You will not see anyone save one for a pinfall or submission. There's literally no benefit to that. Forrester gets planted rolled up that is a rough predicament and look and there was harper took the opportunity to pull a hockey stick out from under the ring but boot by astorio it is down to jennifer storio and chen harper one of these two gets that shot at aria night valley and the shillian dollar championship next week and it is not looking good for chen right now that hockey stick in the hands of Lucette, uh, 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 excuse me, of Jennifer. Able to break through. Cutter rolls through. And she's got it locked in. This is the move that tapped out Valoran, but it's not going to work on Astorio. Oh, this is going to be bad for Harper. Drop kick, rope assisted back to that hockey stick I think and it broke it over the back of Chen Harper the weapon that Harper retrieved may well wind up with her just Chen Harper pucked up and tying her up and bending the spine of Chen is this going to be enough? Broke the hockey stick over her back. Does Harper have to tap? She's in the middle of the ring. She only has her own strength and tenacity to, to pull her out of this. 
And she's able to do it, reverses the momentum of Astorio just enough, but knocked her awareness out, wasn't able to land that drop kick, and down she goes right onto those injured ribs. Kicks through though, rolls through, Boot sends Astorio into the corner. Plants the spine down, is that going to do it? And knocked the wind out of Astorio enough, pulling it out. Last minute, Chen Harper puts away Jenneth Astorio and advances to meet Aria Night Valley next week. Chen Harper getting her first shot at a title here in All Influencer Wrestling. Astorio is not going to be happy about that, but you cannot take anything away from Chen Harper. A potentially interesting situation this leads to as well. Bear in mind Chen Harper, the trainer of Calypso Dominguez, who holds the, the opportunity to take a shot at Presbury D. It was Calypso who won overboard trained by Chen, mentor and student, both with shots at the top prizes in their divisions right now. What will this mean for the shape of All Influencer Wrestling going forward? It'll be a fascinating one to be sure. Catch a quick breather. We're going to be right back. We have one more showcase match triple threat action up next before we move into our main event of those second qualifier matches. Two matches left to go, triple threat, and it's sure to be a vibrant time up next. We'll be back after these short messages. Luz tried everything to open the door, but it wouldn't budge. Hammers, axes, magic, saws, more magic, fire, even more magic, and magic explosions. Still, the door refused her. Why? After all this time and effort, why wouldn't the damn thing open? Sure, it was an enchanted door that would open the path to a potentially catastrophic amount of magic pouring back into the universe, causing endless natural disasters that would drown or bury most cities from existence. But there was an equally high chance that wouldn't happen, and that the magic had been sealed away by ignorant fools for nothing. She had to believe there was a reason why she could tap into a sliver of the magic locked behind the door. That this was it, her singular life purpose. Open the door. Restore its magic back to everyone like it used to be in the stories, where anyone could use magic, for good or bad. That had to be it, right? That had to be why she was standing here, in the door's pocket dimension, on a small plot of earth, large enough for only one person to stand in front of it, swearing at this void black door with iridescent veins flowing along its surface like water, living, taunting her to just open it already. So why was it so hard to swing the damn thing wide? Somehow, she had shoved the door apart just a crack ages ago. A thin, wispy line of light seeped out of a seam down the centre. Whenever she used teleportation magic, as she had decided to call it since she didn't know the correct term and hadn't seen others use it before, probably because it was dangerous and required sliding through space and time, but who was counting? She tapped into a sliver of warmth and power to travel wherever she wished. She'd managed that slight opening unthinking as a child, then never again. What was she doing wrong now? Worse, what if she wasn't doing anything wrong? What if this door wasn't meant to open for her after all? What else could there be for her but this? After everything, after all that searching, what else could there be? This has been an extract from The Void Door by V. M. Ayala. 
to read the full story, please visit beneath-ceaseless-skies.com and search for issue 378. And thank you for watching Masterpiece Theatre. This is All Influencer Wrestling, and on Thursdays, we wear pink. A clash of chromatic cloud chasers here tonight. You heard her arriving at the arena earlier on tonight. One half of the double clout champions, one half of a candied ginger. It's Candy Holiday. It's been a little while since we've seen that either of the members of Candy's Ginger in a solo action. Candy are looking at to re-establish that here tonight. The Ginger Flame, not present here tonight, has a prior engagement, so Candy is flying solo in this triple threat match. And following the chromatic theme of this setup, you know well our former Soul Cloud champion, it's Glix. Still trying to figure out her way back to the top. A win in this triple threat match would be an important mark in that column for Glix. She lost that Soul Cloud Championship, remember, without getting pinned herself. And making their way down to wrap out this trio. You saw her debut at Overboard. You saw her solo debut last week. Harris O'Shell, the Fairweather friend, looking to continue making her mark here in AI Dub. Taking on two more experienced competitors, Paris will need to keep an eye out for any opportunity available to her. This one are not an eliminator match, so the first wrestler to be pinned or submitted will end that. So we may see some alliances momentarily in this one. We may see some of those end match attempts broken up. And disregarding Paris immediately is Glix and Candy tying up at the beginning. And Glix turning her attention to Paris. It's Glix standing tall at the beginning. Candy not about to let that slide. And turns her attention to Paris. Now it's Candy the one who is standing tall. And over the off that rope goes Paris taking that candy down. Paris O'Shell here in the ring with a former and current champion. She is definitely the underdog in this situation. Really has something to prove here. There's that nasty back kick of Candy. We've seen that end many a match before. And of course, again, weapons legal in the triple threat. Glix is not messing around. Glix has gone right for that kendo stick, cracking it over the head of Candy Holiday. Who sensibly rolls out of the way, and Paris wants no part of that. 
dropping licks onto the weapon that she provided. And there's Candy. Tries to go for the pinfall, but Glick's right there. I think hope Glick's was a little more distracted than she actually was. Oh, and there's what I was talking about. Temporary alliance. I think a headbutt there between the two. Glick's able to fight her way out of that predicament she had just found herself in. Candy's got the arms up and protect her. And there's that kendo stick now in the hands of Paris O'Shell. Glick's powers through and knocks it right back out and drops into a kick by Candy. Knee to the gut. Candy in a strong position right now. Glick's on the outside. He needs to get back in so that Candy cannot capitalize and she does exactly that. Try to block the kick there from, from Candy. Paris there going, what did I do? I'm innocent. Flying punch off the mid rope there by Paris. Taunts Candy. Bad move there, but able to counter through. Blix though, are back into the ring. Waiting to take advantage of that distraction. And Paris boots to the spine of Glix as Glix charges into the corner with Candy. Both uh, blocking each other there. Just a scramble mid-air between Paris and Glix. I tried to go for the punch. Glix dodged out of the way. You don't hold on to the Soul Cloud title as long as Glix did without gaining a massive amount of experience. There's that running kick. Takes Candy down, but Paris there to save it. Glicks won many a match with that kick, but a triple threat match, you gotta keep an eye on your other opponent too. Kendo stick now in the hands of Paris, cracks it over the skull of Glicks. Hard hitting, hard fighting me mentality of Candy there. Locks up with Glicks, bounces her face off the announce table. Paris rolls Candy back into the ring and kick by Glix. Candy rolls through. Up onto the shoulder she goes and bounces Glix off the hardest part of the ring, right off of that in ring apron into a gut check by Paris. Sends Glix in. Look at that. Knocks Candy down on the outside. I think maybe was hoping to, to take advantage of Candy's work on Glicks, but gave Glicks too much time to recover. What does Paris have in mind here? Sneaks up behind. And quick hit there by Candy takes the opportunity. It bounces Paris off the siding there trying to decide which way to go for took too much time glicks recovered rolled back out rolls through paris deciding it to take a moment to retrieve a weapon of her own and it's the steel chair in the hands of paris cracks it over the back of glicks This is a brutal punishment. Candy, though, taking great advantage of it. Lots of damage done to Glix. Isolated Paris, who fights back through, though, not letting Candy pull through. What does Paris have in mind here? Go to sleep. Glix's main finisher. And is Paris going to tip in Glix? Is that going to... No, Glix pulls through. That was almost... An incredible statement by Paris. She has broke the kendo stick over Glix's guts. Candy waiting. And Paris stole the running kick from Glix. Stole Glix's own maneuver again. Can Glix make it up in time to break up the pinfall? Barely, barely pulled that through Paris O'Shell almost with a shock victory.
Dives off the rope. Strike to the face. Candy stunned on the outside. And Paris hiking this up. No, Candy able to get back in in time. Almost another golden opportunity for the Fairweather friend there. And there's that knee strike again. But Glix is back to her feet. And Glix has had enough. Just punches out Paris in mid-air. Candy back to the feet. Knee strike by Glix. That was an awful lot of damage done to Candy earlier. Is that going to do it? That has done it. Glix pins Candy. Glix wins the triple threat. But the story of this match is the danger that is Paris O'Shell. Proving that she was she went into this match as the underdog. She certainly did not end it that way. Here is your winner, the superstar. Glix has to be happy with that. That has to put her further up the rankings to arguably get a shot at whoever wins between Calypso Dominguez and Presley D. She wants that clout back. She's making a strong case to get it. But with that, we have one last match to round out our cards tonight. Let's check in on how that tournament ranking is looking. We've seen Tiny Hatamatsi and RBFS both advance last week to the semi-finals. It was Reynolds and Brock who put away the dastardly doo in our opening match of the card tonight. Next up, our final match of the night. The sold clout champion himself, Abrick Brightmoon, teaming with his childhood friend Tiff to take on Renee Crimson and Abel Theron. One of those two teams will meet RBFS next week. We'll find out who after these short messages. suplex a train, but I can't suplex an octopus. And here is our octopus friend though. Can I suplex an octopus? Nope. Can't suplex an octopus, turns out. Too slippery. Can I suplex Ultima Weapon? So we're going to start chucking some shuriken. I can suplex Ultima Weapon. Come on, we're so close. We have to, come on, Sabin. Come on. Suplex! Boom! Hippo power! is now an option. I'm sorry, I have a baseball bat? Oh, hold on, you're, hey, you're smoking. Zangoku 
私だけをただ見つめて微笑んでるあなたそっとくれるもの求めることに夢中で運命さえまだ知らない痛いけな瞳だけどいつか気づくでしょうその背中にははるか未来目指すための羽があること残酷な天使の手で窓辺からやがて飛び立つ And we see there once again a reminder of how those rankings stack up as we move into our last event. Averick and Tiff versus Renace and Abel. And making up their tag entrance because she is going to be here as their manager, Asha Pole, joining Averick and Tiff. Team Chaos making their way down. Asha Pole, somebody who is planning a return to the other echelons here herself as well. They've been playing a bit of a back seat as Avrik and Tip have been on the rise. Asha will be claiming her place before long, don't you worry. He won that sold cloud title from Steve Sparks, galvanized his reign in a defense. Averick Brightmoon looking to add the new tag titles, double clout, to the trophy case of the Amon Orphans. If Avrik and Tiff can claim these, you know Asha is going to be targeting either the Shillian Dollar or Sold Clouds Championship herself so that the Orphans can be draped in gold. And here he comes. You know him, you love him. Tiff gyrating his way down to the ring. One of these two teams has a date next week with RBFS. An immense challenge for whoever claims victory here tonight. We saw a rare performance last week where the Minotaur brothers absolutely destroyed the team of Steve Sparks and Phantom. We have three teams set, a fourth to join them tonight. One of those four teams will be our inaugural Double Cloud Champions for this side of the roster. On the other side, of course, Candy Ginger, as we talked about earlier tonight, have been holding those for quite some time. The Circle rising to try to take those. Mm -hmm. And here he comes. A man who has come so close to clout himself, but never quite gotten his grasp on it. Interestingly, breaking out the purple gear tonight, perhaps in an effort of team unity with Abel. Chris. 
We have not seen Renace break out the purple gear very often. Something he usually only does for major matches. It is going to form a stronger Team Unity appearance with Abel. Mind games, perhaps, by Renee's trying to get into the head of his opponents. Ren and Abel faced each other time and time again as opponents. Their first time teaming together, though. Will they be able to coexist? Abel Theron, our first ever sold out champion, held that title for an entire season until finally being dethroned by the unpredictable Steve Sparks. Has Abel found himself a new part to clout? Will he find it at the side of Renace? Looks like it's Averick and Renace starting out the match tonight. Awful lot of blue in the ring right now, and Ren just clubbing Bright Moon in the face to start off. Ashapol not liking that, watching on from the outside. This is fine for Bright Moon, though. He is a diminutive tank. He is more than happy to take that punishment. He will dish it out twice as hard. And looks like we got that excellent and familiar tag team offense going. Oh, Ren countered to Averick, but Tiff took a blow to then Ren for his trouble and bounces him off right back to the well again. There's the tag. Averick holds him in place for a big boot to the gut by Tiff, and now Tiff the legal man. Renee saying two can play at that game. There's the tag. It's Abel now legal. Flying kick to the face of Tiff. Needed to get a lot of air on that to land it, and he did indeed. Bright Moon, neck breaker, down goes Tiff. Boots to the spine. Vaults over that rope, Tiff and Tiff saying, oh, you two can play that game. No, nope, crossbody off the rope. Tiff not getting baited into that contest of athleticism. Legs hooked around the neck of Tiff. Round we go. Down gets the pinfall in. I think Averick letting Tiff handle it got a little nervous at the end there, but Tiff able to power out. And there is your tag, Renace, and there's the hot tag. Averick and Ren, we started the match this way. We're right back into it. Running clothesline from Bright Moon sends Crimson down to the mat. Knee strike, and he is hyping up in the middle of the ring. He is feeling that power of Seren Ray running through him. Drop kick. Grabs Ren by the throat, up and drops him down. Little powerhouse is Bright Moon. It goes for the pinfall. And out of nowhere, dashing along the ring, Abel Theron didn't even get the let the ref get into position for the pinfall with that one. And up and power bomb down it goes Ren. And waiting in the corner is Bright Moon. Are we gonna see it? Are we going to see? Seren Ray Spear down that goes Crimson. Can he capitalize? Can he follow through? There's Abel. This is what we saw early in the opening match. 
lesson not learned. This is what caused both the Dulu and the combo of Reynolds and Brock so much trouble. Brightmoon got too fired up, did not think about getting rid of, of Theron. Could have ended the match there, but did not get rid of his opponent. Tip doing it for him, but you know, uh, 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 excuse me, losing my ability to talk. The excitement is simply getting too much. Renz got Brightmoon down, shoving into that missing eye. Elbow to the throat of Crimson, though. And it just punches to the gut, DDT, down goes Crimson, rolls through, but once again, there's Theron. Right Rune is an absolute battering ram, but strategy has never been his strong suit. That is where Asha pulls half of this normal team comes in and delayed vertical suplex by Bright Moon rolls through going for the pinfall again, but you see him coming in once again. He is not learning this lesson. Tiff is Tiff trying to keep Theron from and Tiff has had enough indeed. He's gone to the outside trying to take care of Abel as Brightman's gone to the top, baiting Renee's yelling at him to stand. Double axe handle off the top. Did Tiff do enough damage though to keep Abel down? No, he didn't. He's right there in position again. You can see it. And we're going back to the vertical suplex again. And this time, Renee's able to power through, wriggled out, boot to the back of the head, and there's the tag. A much needed breather for Renee's as Abel Theron now is the legal man. These two colliding in the ring. Two of the shortest competitors here in all influencer wrestling matching up. Able, by far the fresher competitor. And proving it as he fights his way out of that grapple attempt by Brightmoon. Ducks under and another shoulder check, but right into each other. Hoists up, up and over goes Abel. Blocks the drop kick by Bright Moon and rolls through. And there's that spin. Scissors down again. Has worked out very well for Abel before. Averick trying to make his way to Tiff. Finally wanting to make that tag. But Theron not letting him do it. Heads his takedown by Abel. He's got him pinned. Can he do it? Is this going to do it? No. Ab Bright Moon kicks out too. Rolls to the outside as Abel, there's that more experienced attitude of Abel though. He knows what he is doing. He's taken out Tiff temporarily as Asha can do nothing but watch on. Averick hyping himself up on the outside. And bashes, uh, bashes Abel over and lays him out over the ship's decking and big boots to the temple. Gave Tiff that moment needed to recover. This has this is Averick's role in their adventuring group. He is one of the team's tanks defending Tiff so he can get back to his feet. And disrespected by Abel saves Tiff though once again. And giving Tiff the opportunity. The tank has done their duty. It's time for the DPS to take over. Crashes down onto the arm of Abel Theron. Also, once again, we see that spinning head scissors takedown. And tagging out, it's Renee's. He's got that breather. Ren and Tiff now locking up. What does Tiff have in mind here? Big chop to the chest. Ties up the leg now, working over that ankle. Snaps through. And... Tried to go for a cutter or some sort of maneuver there, but countered by Renace. Tag it again, keeping each other fresh. Re uh, Abel Theron now back in the match. And slam down the dream, turning into a nightmare for Tiff. Averick once again saving the match. Renace had enough, though. Ren has gone to try to take Bright Moon out of the equation. Seemingly did what he set out to do. Though nope, Bright Moon is back up again. Didn't do enough damage. Manipulating those long limbs of Tiff now. 
over we go and back to the tag no not thought he was going for the tag he's gone to the top rope he's yelling at tip get to your feet what does theron have in mind and cutter off the top rope that may well do it but bright moon's there and look at the speed you wouldn't think with those little legs bright moon could get that much speed but he managed to do it cannonballing across the ring to save tiff and once again renee's starting to get frustrated at this point ref yelling at him to get the hell out of the ring Theron sends Tiff back in. Those that they need to capitalize on the weakened Tiff. They cannot let Averick get back into this. Tag out. We've done the maneuverability. Now it's time for the powerhouse. Renace trying to do enough damage to put Tiff away. His own time for that suplex. And down he goes right onto the neck. Into a pile driver. But there's Averick again. Keeping his friend up. Keeping him in the match. Crossbody dive there by Tiff. And Tiff going up high. He's gone to the top. Flying elbow drop crashes down onto Renace, but there's Theron and no sign of Averick to stop it. Tiff's had enough. DDT down goes Theron. This could be the opportunity. Tiff is feeling it. Tiff is fired up. He is feeling this. He's got the tag. It's Bright Moon's turn. Can they finish off Renace before Theron can recover? Double axe handle blow. They need to put Ren before Theron can get back in. That is he's hyped up, but Ren crawling over. I think Theron's back in position. Averick's just letting it happen. He was waiting. He wanted Abel back in the match. He got what he wanted, but I'm not so sure he should have asked for it. Look at the way you heard the entire ring shake on that. Kicks out. Tiff didn't even try. He knew Averick had that. Averick, though, rolling himself. He, what does Theron have in mind here? He's up and shoulder check sends Averick down. And when you're that short, that's a much further drop. Turning his attention to Tiff, but Ren is out on the outside. Renace is out. We damn near have a handicap match going on now. Although, tip out too. It's basically Bright Moon versus Theron now. Can one of these put the other away before? This might be it. Theron plants Bright Moon. He needs to dig deep. Divine intervention coming through for Abel, for, for Average Bright Moon, excuse me somehow powered through Abel Theron playing to the crowd as he waits head scissors down goes Bright Moon but Tiff and Ren are both back in hauls Averick over into the corner he goes and there's the tag double team time strike and Ren's getting the run up and up he goes and down he goes. Tiff calling furiously for the tag. Super kick by Renace. Tiff's though still there. He's ready. Bright Moon getting back to his feet. Here we're going to see that pile driver once again. And it is right through into that pile driver. But Tiff is waiting right there. Ren did not take him out. Tiff made the save. Oh, Ren choking out Bright Moon. He's got him down there. He's got the cross face locked in. Bright Moon's limbs too short. He's not able to make it to the ropes. And Theron takes out Tiff. Bright Moon in real trouble, but able to power through. Somehow did not tap out. Boots through. Oh, and Ren being stalked. 
There's Tiff rolling back in. I think he was rolled back in by Abel. And look at that power of, eight, of, of Bright Moon there. But Abel's back in place. He's going to make it for that. Tiff, cap, Tiff realized too late what was happening. Asha Paul watching on on the outside, cheering her childhood friends on and back into the corner. Tag is made, Tiff is legal again. Up they go and down goes Ren. And Tiff sensibly finally turns his attention to Abel. Boots off the top, but Ren is now on the outside too. But there's Averick. Throws Ren into the waiting Tiff. This is the opportunity these two have been waiting for. Tiff needs to capitalize. Tag is made. Averick's back legal. Ren does finally realize running clothesline. But through Abel still down the outside. Is that going to do it? Is that going to be enough? I think it is. They've done it. They finally pulled it through. Took out Abel, Theron, Averick, Bright Moon, and Tiff. Put away Ren and Abel. The Emon Orphans advance to the semi finals. Brilliant show by those two. Renace and Abel working together better as a team than I think anyone thought they would. But simply could not put away the lifelong friendship of Tiff and Averick. With that, we know what our semi-final field looks like. Let's bring up that one more time. Two matches next week to determine what the final will be. Stephen Joyce and DC Lasser, the Tiny Hatter Mancers, will face Reynolds and Brock. And on the right-hand side of the field, Vinny and Fred Rico, representing RBFS, will take on Abrick and Tiff. We have two very similar and very different matchups. Two smaller, more athletic teams up against an absolute wall of meat beef in the case of RBFS. It will be very interesting to see how both of these matches play out. And we now know too, next week, Aria Night Valley will be defending her Shillian Dollar Championship against her new contender, Chen Harper. We'll see how all of this goes through. We'll see what fallout will there be from this seeming alliance now formed between Banshee and Saria Violet. Plenty of mystery and action to come here. We're all influencer wrestling. I've been your clown missionary, Captain Tyrion Gaidel, the most dashingly handsome pirate in all of professional wrestling. Remember, visit shop.tyrion.com for all your all influencer wrestling merchandise needs. We will see you next week, and remember, until then, stay hashtag act or without.